did South Carolina lose track of nearly $2 billion in taxpayer money? We now know that 21 students and staff, they came down with a sudden illness in the middle of the day. That car crashing into this bicycle shop. It's the Free Hub Bicycles. It's the Lell building. It's located on South Main Street, which is right where I'm standing. We've had crews on scene all morning. Uh, basically, there's a giant hole in this bicycle shop and I spoke with the owners of the building and they were telling me they're not entirely sure how long they're going to be closed. In fact, this isn't just something that impacts just their business. This building holds several local businesses here in Travelers Rest. Here in Anderson, residents are still picking up the pieces after Thursday storm rolled through. But if you take a look behind me, even the mayor couldn't escape the storm's wrath. We're going to take a little walk right here on this uh, pathway very carefully. There's a lot of debris here, a lot of glass, and really just the remnants of what's left of this house. We have learned that that plane originally was flying from Myrtle Beach and then Knoxville and then to Asheville, and that's when they had to make that mayday call for engine failure because their cockpit started filling up with smoke. That plane crashed on I-26 around 8.15 last night, leaving a fiery scene. We've been showing you that video all morning long of uh, those drivers witnessing that crash site right there. What is it like to be out here um, trying to find your dad? I mean, this is this is the church congregation, right? And yeah. you're actually a pastor of the church. Yeah. Um, overwhelming. Not to ask anyone and everyone coming from all parts of South Carolina and, and even North Carolina, people we don't even know, even in, in this town, coming to just love, care, and just see my father come home. That suspect has been identified as 43-year-old Jason Chad Prosser. Now, residents tell me he is known in this area as Chad, and we've been out here all day and the crime scene tape has actually since been taken down. I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like. Uh, this was a very active situation this morning and residents tell me this whole area was lit up like a Christmas tree last night. We are here at Greenwood High School and a new school year means new goals and one of those goals is to cut back on classroom distractions. That means cell phones. There's a new policy that you need to know about so students need to have those cell phones turned off during the school school day. They can bring their phones to school, but they won't be able to turn them on until those school hours are over or they have extracurricular activities that they're doing. Now, if your child has a medical emergency, this is something you need to talk to the school about or their teacher because there is an exception in this policy. So you'll be able to talk to uh, your child during school hours. We spoke with Jonathan Graves. He's a communication director with Greenwood School District 50, and he says we're really getting back to basics. These kids have always had cell phones, so it's going to be a big adjustment for them, but we would just encourage the parents, encourage the students to work with us uh, through this new policy. It's a learning curve for everybody. He also told me that the state will be implementing a cell phone policy for schools in South Carolina. That's going to take effect next school year, and if schools don't develop their own cell phone policy, they could lose funding. So this is an issue that schools all across our area are really taking seriously. He also says that uh, the Greenwood District is going to continue to monitor this policy and see how it's working out for students, staff, and uh, parents as well. We broke the story to you about an hour ago, and since then I have gone through that suit and I have learned it was filed on behalf of one person in Greenville County, and it is giving us the most detailed account of the allegations that we've seen so far. So before we get into those disturbing details, we need to take a look at the man you see right here on your screen. He's the center of these allegations. This is Scott Foster, and he was the owner of the Greenville County-based business. Now, the coroner says he committed suicide in Greenville County last week. Here's just part of the lawsuit. It says, quote, over the course of over a year, so beginning in early 2020, Foster began to take an interest in plaintiff upon her promotion to the top tier team within Rockstar. And then over the next six months, Foster had multiple communications with the plaintiff, primarily through the social media app Snapchat that included messages of sexual nature, nude pictures of himself and requests for nude pictures of the plaintiff. Now, the lawsuit goes on to say on at least 10 occasions, 
Foster persuaded the victim in performing various sex acts with him. These acts occurred, quote, at Foster's home, in Foster's vehicle, Rockstar facility, at hotels during competitions, and in both South Carolina and Florida. The lawsuit says the victims suffer from extensive pain of mind, body, and shock, as well as emotional distress, loss of enjoyment, and mental anguish. Those are just to name a few of the things that were listed in that suit, but multiple law firms say they are re representing other victims. A news conference was held yesterday where attorneys say Foster supplied their clients who were cheerleaders with alcohol, abused them. The attorneys did not say exactly how many clients there are, but say they've heard dozens of stories. This didn't just happen in a vacuum. This was allowed to happen because of power, unbridled power, where these individuals felt comfortable taking advantage of children. According to the lawsuit, the United States All-Star Federation, Varsity Spirits, and Rockstar, who were all named as defendants, were aware of complaints against Foster both before and during early 2020, and they failed to intervene. The suit also alludes to background checks not being completed thoroughly since Foster was given the green light to coach. You do your tricks upside down. Um, how did you get started in all of this? <laughs> Incredible! <laughs> How do you feel? I'm so glad. <laughs> you survived. I survived. Because I got to wrap things up. But for now, reporting. Come on. Oh, Christy Waite, Fox Carolina News.